position battles worth watching this offseason? I, I mean, <laughs> I think your guy Dwelly might be in some trouble, Grant. They just brought in another tight end. I, I feel like that backup that'll... tight end, and not only backup tight end, but third string tight end. Who gets cut out of those guys? Because you know Kittle is likely to miss a couple games. Like he plays violent. Chances are he's going to miss some games. And if he does, who are those two tight ends going to be? Right? Like who are those other guys? So look, all I want to say is people have been telling me for four years that Ross Dwelly's in the bubble and he's not going to make it. And all I'm going to say is if you want to take Ross Dwelly's spot on an NFL roster, you better wake up pretty damn early in the morning and be on your P's and Q's because Ross Dwelly is the freaking man in the offseason. Not that he's not good in the regular season, but he gets targeted in the offseason and he doesn't drop the ball. So just yes, uh, two days ago, was it yesterday? Yesterday. That was yesterday. He caught four passes, you know, playing with the starters because uh, Kittle wasn't practicing. So, you know, who started? Dwelly. Doesn't mean that he'll keep that uh, spot, but he's been on the team a long time. He's a vet. He does everything right. You better be on your game to take Ross Dwelly's spot. But yeah, it could happen. It could. It could. Well, I'll say this about Dwelly, too. I almost feel like he's just in the wrong offense, to be frank, right? He's not the best blocker. He's 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 an oh, he's a serviceable blocker is what I'll say. That's the word I was searching for. Serviceable blocker, but he's not the best blocker. He turned it from a weakness to something that at least he you know gives effort and he can he block can get away. Yes, and, yeah, yeah, and he's and strange, you love that. But, yeah, but he is a pass catcher like this. He can get open and he does not drop the ball. I just feel like I feel like if he was in Kansas City's offense or something, he would do fantastic. Right, Baltimore, Tampa. maybe something like Tampa. that. But here, Tampa, Tampa, Tamp, there you go. Brady. Yes, yeah, good. That's a great call. If he was with Brady, he would do great. So, I, and it's not all his fault. I just feel like he's he's listen. He is on the bubble, right? And this is the first time yeah. I've thought that. I hope he makes a team. I really like Ross the boss, but it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens this year. I also think Charlie Warner's in the bubble, and I also think there's no guarantee that Tyler Croft makes the team. And I think it's going to be heavily yeah. based on how they perform this offseason. And all I got to say is day one goes to Ross. So maybe the next one, maybe Tyler Croft ball. Again, what I don't like about OTAs is there were two <laughs> other practices I didn't see this week. I just don't know. So I'm telling you, here's what happened in OTAs week one. Technically, I'm telling you what happened in one of the three days. Yeah, that's fair. That's Trey Lance could have been 0 for 77 today, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> no one would ever know. That's fair. Yeah, that's totally fair. Jesse, give me one thing. No, hold on. We finish. Did we finish? No, 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 no. We didn't finish. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Who, who else? Yeah. All right. Uh, nickel. Nickel. Ooh, nickel. Because right now it's Darquise Denard. But to me, that's almost veteran courtesy. Like he is 30. He signed, I think, a one year deal. Um, and he played some for them last year. So it's almost like by default. Now they say they like him, but uh he's gonna have to outplay. He's not, it's not like He's in the Talanoa spot where they're, they didn't believe in him. Like, no, that you get the first crack at it, but you're going to have to outplay clearly D'Amador and Womack. And I'm not sure that he will. He could. But so far, Womack looks interesting. The thing about Womack that stands out is he has hella long arms, mm. unlike D'Amador. So he seems like even though he's only 5'9", he can contest breakup passes that you wouldn't expect. I like that. We'll see how he does. Did they give you indication that they were putting him in nickel? I feel like they almost view him as an outside guy, but we view him in nickel. In the rookie minicamp, he was only outside, but in this practice, he got both. So Okay, that's we'll good. See. That's good, because I think the profile, we assume nickel, but we don't know how they view him, right? I think that's great. I, center is the other one. Oh. Mac, we Listen, regardless of whether Mac comes back or not, this is probably Max last year at best if he comes back. So if that's the case, they've got Donovan West, who a lot of people like pre-draft. He's now on this team. And you've got some other guys there. Like, Who are you going to decide to keep if Matt comes back? Who are you going to decide to risk to put on the practice squad? And who are you just going to be comfortable with outright cutting overall? And if Matt doesn't come back, what the hell are you going to do with that position? I, I think that center spot is really interesting no matter what they do. Yeah, and I wonder, like, how long this goes with Mac. Like, is, is, is their attitude like, look, dude, you signed a three-year contract. Take as long as you want to make your decision, but, like, we'll take you week one. We don't need you there in OTAs, minicamp. We don't even need you there in training camp. 
we'll, we'll, we'll let all these young guys get the reps. And if you want to come through in shape at the end, great. Because really, probably Alex Mack off the couch is a better option. Here were their centers. They played two centers in practice on Tuesday. The starter was Jake Brendel. The backup was Keaton Sutherland. Those are their centers. Oh, so so Donovan good. West didn't even get in the action unless I missed it. Maybe he did. Maybe there was a third string that I didn't notice. But as far as I was concerned, it was those two. Mm. So, yeah, Alex Mack. I feel like the Niners are kind of just saying, like, if we just ask him nice enough, you can't say no. You know? <laughs> I hope so, man. If we just send a really nice care package, he'll say yes. It, it's crazy because if Mack comes back, all of a sudden, all the questions about the offensive line, really, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's like, okay, yeah, they lost Tomlinson, but he's ne- – I mean, Banks is coming in. He looks pretty decent, and he's next to the best left tackle in the game. It's not that big of a deal. But once you lose Mac, if that's the case, it becomes a very big deal. So this thing could really go either way, and it hinges all on what Mac decides he wants to do. My ca- my question with Mac is, like, is he staying in football shape in the sense, like, with, with offensive linemen, they have to st- keep up all that weight. And he got married this offseason. He's still on his honeymoon, I think. Like, is he – you know, like prepping for the season in that way, like eating what he would normally eat, lifting how he would normally lift, or is he 260? I have no idea. But that's if you're on the fence about playing offensive line the NFL in almost June, like can you actually play that season? I don't know. It's a question I would have for the experts. Well, that and that's I guess that's another thing that I did kind of take away from you know getting back to when they were on the podium and what they talked about. It really did come across like Mac is truly undecided. That's, that's, that's what the I, vibe that I got. I'm telling you, the vibe I got from Kittle is that, you know, he'll he'll come around. He'll come around. He can't say yeah. no to me. I'm George. You know, he loves <laughs> me. Like, okay. All right. Well, great. I hope that I hope that's the case because you've got no backup plan. Unless there's something with J.C. Treader like under the table that they could possibly, maybe. Otherwise, you got no backup plan. Don't tell me Jake Prendel is going to start 17. Nothing against Jake. But that's a that's a big step up. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to be there. That's not where they No. Be. It's like the Hronis Grasu position. You don't want to be in the Hronis Grasu situation. Mm-hmm.